Hello, on this video I'm going to show you how to read from the database. Here I have the project from the past video. And on this video I have something like this. There's an index and then there's a form that posts to page 2 and page 2 displays the values that you got from the index. On this video I'm going to create another view called Edit Person. And I'm going to put a link from page 2 to this new view. And this view, we're going to read from the database. So first, I want to create a new view. So if I go to my Views folder, inside the home, I only have two views. I want to create a new one. So for that, I'm going to create a action result here first. Now this action result does not have a view right here. So I'm going to create this view, but I'm going to use Visual Studio to create that. So I'm going to right click on the edit person and then I'm going to click on add view. And I do not want to use a layout page, so I'm going to uncheck here and click on add. And here I have a page for me. I'm going to go back to the home controller. And this edit person method, we need to do a couple of things. All right, so first, let's get the ID from the session. From the previous method we created, we already do something right here. So I'm just going to copy this. But I do not want a string. I want it to be an integer. So I'm going to put integer UID. And now I need to convert this to an integer. So, and just like I said before, this is not one of the best methods to convert it, but it's the simplest one. So I'm going to use it. Now we need to get the person object from the database. And I'm going to use the DAO person class. So I'm going to create a DAO person object. And for the constructor, I'm passing the configuration. And this configuration is what we created earlier in this controller. And it's right here on the top. So this is the configuration. Now I want to create a person object. And I want to get it from the DAO person class. So now this method does not exist, hence it's got a red squiggly. And I'm going to pass the user ID. So now let's create this method. So I'm going to hover over and then show potential fix and then generate the method. And that will create a method for me on the DAO person. So I'm going to right click again and then go to implementation. And here I have the method the Visual Studio created for me. And now I need the four steps to read from the database. Now the four steps is only here in the top. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right here. So step number one, never changes. I'm going to leave as is. Step number two, change a little bit. Instead of inserting, now I want to read something from the database. And if I go to my database, I can create a script to select. And if I run this, I get the information for the database. But when I'm using this query on the codes, I want to get one specific record. So I'm going to put a clause right here. So where ID equals 31, for example. If I do that, I only get one specific row. So I'm going to copy this query. And I'm going to take to my code. So I'm going to replace this entire query by the one that I copy from 
the SQL Server Management Studio. Now, if I keep my query like that, it's always going to read the ID 31 only. I don't want that. I want to have that as a parameter. So I'm going to put an at UID. And I'm going to put the UID here. And instead of person.username, I'm going to put the UID. And this UID is the same UID that you pass as a parameter. I do not need this line. And instead of saving to the UID, I need to save into a person object. So I'm going to create a person object. And now I can start reading from the database into the person. So person dot username equals reader. And here I want to read whatever it's on username and it happens to be name. So I'm going to copy the name and put it here. And then I want to do the same thing. And for the city, I want to use the city column. So I'm going to put it right here. And for ID, I don't need to read from the database because I already have it. So I'm just going to set it right here. And now I have a complete person. Step four, close the connection. Nothing changes here. And now I can return the person. So quite simple method. It receives a user ID. And then I read the connection string from the app settings.json file. Create a connection. Create a command. Query the database and then close the connection. And then finally return the person. So this method is done. Now on home controller, I need to send the person to the view. So very simple. I just put it right here. Now the view has the person. And the next step is to create a link from page to to edit person. So here on page two, I'm going to create a link. And the action takes two parameters. One is the page where you want to go or the view. So the view happens to be edit person and the controller is home. So now I have a page two with the link to the edit person and the edit person passes through the controller and the controller gets the information from the database and passes the information to the view. Now on the edit person view, nothing is happening yet, but let's write the code to have a form right here that the user can change his information. So I'm going to copy some code from the page two. So the first one is the model. So I'm just going to copy and paste it right there. And I'm going to also go to my index. And on index, I'm going to copy the form back to my edit person. Inside the body, I'm going to paste the code that I copy from the index and the action Instead of being page two, it's going to be update person. This action does not exist yet. We're going to create in a little while. So for the inputs, I have the username and the city. But if you run this code right now, all you see is a text box with empty values. I want to put the values that I got from the database inside this text box. And to do that, I'm going to put value equals, and then the razor tag, model dot username. Remember, this view is getting a person model from the home controller. And then I'm going to do the same thing 
with the city. And now I need to create a action for the update person on the home controller because that's the method that this form is going to post to. So the home controller, I need to create a method and this action receives a person model. There is no view for the update person yet, but it's fine like that. I'm going to implement this method on the next video. So this is what we have now. On the edit person, I'm reading the information from the database and displaying over there. That's all. And once you click on submit right here on the edit person, then it's going to post to a different action. And the action we just created is not totally implemented yet. So the only way for us to test this code now is to put a stopper here. And then I'm going to start debugging. So this is my index. Jane, she lives in Seattle. Click on submit. Go to page two. Now if I click on edit my info, it goes to the edit person, it loads a form, and it puts the information from the database now into this text box. Now if Jane moves, and Jane is going to move to LA, if I click on submit, now the stopper stops the code, and if you look right here on the locals, I'm going to expand the person. And what I'm looking for now is that the username has Jane and that the city has LA, which is the new value that we just created. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. This is easy and you can do it.